High above Kowloon, facing Hong Kong across the bay, is an amazing East meets West restaurant in an Art Deco setting. To find out more, stick around. I'm Thomas Robson, and this is Entree to Asia. You don't have to visit Hong Kong to realize it's a unique city. The people who live there certainly think that it is, and it seems they're always on the lookout for innovation. We're going to take you to a very innovative restaurant that wouldn't look out of place in Northern California. It's called Napa. It was here that we discovered how some traditional Hong Kong flavors will go a long way to provide some new California-style dishes. The Napa restaurant is well known for its California-inspired food. But it's important to note that that food also has a very strong and typical taste of Hong Kong. Situated on the very, very top floor of the Kowloon Shangri-La, not only is there great food, great decor, but also there's a view that is simply amazing. Chef Simon Chan is here to represent uh, the hotel and to present to us a dish of lamb, is that right? Yes, right. This lamb, this is chill lamb we buy from England. English lamb, wow. Yeah, English lamb. The lamb is the only, the English lamb is the top color. It is the yes. best. Always season the meat. Yeah, always seasoning, pepper, and salt. salt. Yeah. White pepper in this case, right? Yes, it's cracked pepper. Have to make a, a both sides, everywhere have salt and pepper. So, Perfect. we also start with olive oil. It's also same in restaurant. We don't have oven, so we need a long time to make the, the lamb. It'll take so, a while to cook a double thick chop like so that. So the always, always we we cook the lamb. Have to cook the the fat first. The fatty side yeah. first. So the fat will be make a more crispy. So right. same in here no oven. We try use the pick up for that. Again, a nice yeah. deep pan yeah. with a thick bottom yeah. and cover it. Yeah. And that creates a nice hot environment yeah, like to encourage the and cooking. Then more slowly, slowly go inside the meat. Right. And then when we make the meat, it's very, very tender. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So a nice, slow, careful cooking process. Yeah. And uh, now what else is going to be featured in this dish? I see here what looks to me like yeah. some Napa or Su yeah. Choy. Yeah, this Su Choy. It's the Chinese cabbage I base before because we need we need almost half hour to play this one so okay. we i make as one so, so the, the napa is uh, is is sliced thinly yeah and then you uh, fry a little bit of thinly sliced bacon yes thinly, mild bacon mild bacon and chicken stock and paste almost half hour okay so you so, stir and kind of pan braise it yeah right okay and the napa becomes soft and tender yeah. and the bacon becomes cooked yeah all right It's important during the process to uh, yeah. turn the lamb and make sure that each side gets cooked, gets browned and sealed. Yeah. It's more important to know evenly. So both sides. So now it's almost half cooked. And then we put the garlic, the whole garlic. If it wants the whole garlic. Whole so, cloves of garlic with the peel on, yeah. just bruise them so that the yeah. skin is open a yeah, bit. Yeah, right. So we put on that, just get the flavor and last, and for it also, we serve on plate also. Oh, it'll be yeah. nice and tender. So now right. how long will that cook for? This one now uh, will be cooked uh, five minutes, we'll be done. Okay. If you two cook too long, and then he will burn also. Right. Right. Mm. 
so this the the rubber was okay done. So we put on the side. So moping, I don't use oil foil. I use butter. Okay. Because more more favorable for the pin, and then uh, I would say it's them. Have a little bit oily for the pin is okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the butter really has that nice sweet quality yeah, to go right. with the bean. Now, what would be a good substitute? I mean, we could use broad beans or maybe frozen lima bean, just as a <clears throat> convenience at home. Not yeah, the same, right. right? Not the same. It's the, in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, most of the people can can buy the mo bean. Right. But in Europe, most of the people can buy the bok bean. Right. So, so use the broad the, bean. Yeah, yeah. So it depends uh, in your country what bean you want to buy. Doesn't matter, you know. Just green bean. So it's got a nice, yeah, yeah. A green, a green bean, and one that needs that won't be damaged by cooking it for a little while. White pepper, pepper. salt. So now the lamb was almost done. Turn over the garlic cloves. Yeah. <clears throat> so now, <clears throat> now I put the five herb. This herb was uh, I use thyme, thyme, Italian parsley, tarragon. Mm -hmm. And oregano together. Okay, so, so Italian parsley, oregano, thyme. Yeah, and uh, Italian parsley, oregano, thyme, tarragon. And tarragon, yeah. of course. Yeah, so now put on top. Aha, put the lamb on top. <clears throat> so because the, the, the herb, you cannot cook too long, otherwise the green was out. But if you don't cook them, it will like a salad, green. They have the green taste, it's right. no good. So this so, cooking closed yeah. will make sure that they don't have a raw flavor and it also help their flavor penetrate and perfume the meat. Put a little bit of butter inside. And again, butter is important here because it adds yeah. another dimension in flavor and it works with the herbs. I see. And you carefully yeah. baste the top with some butter. Okay, now anything was finished, now we can put on the plate. So the first... Let I me put bring the, the plate here close for you. Yes, thank you. So the first I use the, the ring okay. for the bin. A ring form. Yeah. Something we bin. see happening a lot yeah. more in... Uh, in cooking these days yeah, to right. help give a nice presentation. So now I take out the lamb first. Mm -hmm. Because I need the pan for the favorite for the for the lamb juice. Right, of course. We'll so deglaze we the pan. Out, yeah, grace. So now the pan the oil cannot use anymore. Okay. So we throw away. <coughs> we don't want that fat <coughs> anyways yeah, in the food. Now we put the veal juice on there. Okay, now this is reduced yeah. veal stock. That is the veal stock. And that's a very big classic in yeah. uh, Western cooking. Yeah, right. Now, if we didn't have a veal stock concentrated like yeah. that, is there a substitute we could consider? This very, very long time to concentrate that. I, we use the veal bone, mm -hmm. veal bone and carrot and some uh, bukigani. Bukigani, yes. Bukigani. Cook, base 40, 48 hours. Wow, that's a so, long reduction. Then, yeah, when then we pass and then to to reduce. Pass it through a, yeah. a, a, a strainer yeah. to make sure nothing is left inside. So, okay, now the bean put inside. <clears throat> because I will use this one is the he will he will not go another way. So center on the middle. Right. And then the pad choy. Oh, this is okay. Now you get that nice separation, separation rather than definition. Yeah. The beans and a perfect circle of the braised souchoy around it.
I'm starting to get an yeah. idea about what I can do with some of Mum's old cookie cutters. <laughs> so, finish. <clears throat> and then clean it a little bit. So, now we take out this one. So the vegetable will be separate. Don't put together. So the lamb will come like this. A perfect bridge. Right. And then the garlic off. So, and then the potato. This one is the potato chips. We put like this. Shredded potato. Yes. And then you shape it in a ball and deep fry it. That must yeah, take some right. time to be careful yeah, to make sure it's round. Yeah, very careful. Very, very easy burn. And then the juice will be on the outside. Wow. So you will see one by one circle. So three circles. Yeah. Topped with the lamb and the potato. Yes. What a lovely combination. The Shanghainese bean, the su choy braised with the chicken stock and, uh, and a little bit of fresh bacon. Right. Lamb, five herbs. Oh. Wow. Sorry. No, that's, that's, now that's the nature of kitchen work. Can you imagine what it's like when you have 70 or 80 people to feed and you're putting together beautiful plates like this? Everything's hot. Everything's uh, difficult to touch and handle. At this point, we leave the challenge to the waiter to bring it to the dining room. Yeah, right. Simon, thank you, Master. You're welcome. Wonderful example. Beautiful cuisine. This is Napa at its finest as the sun sets over Kowloon. The signature of the Napa restaurant is to take a classic Western dish and add a nice Asian touch to that. Well, today let's take a classic Asian dish and add a Western touch to it in a dish we call bourbon chicken. I've got a lovely fresh chicken here and I'm going to get it ready for the recipe simply by trimming off the wings. And you don't have to trim off the entire wing, just what I'm doing here. Let me get this out of the way, I want to show it clearly to you. There we go. Just trimming off the second and third joint there. I'm also going to trim off the tail. Tidy this up. Get rid of anything that's inside that's unnecessary here. A little bit of extra fat can be trimmed away, no problem. If you're buying your chickens in an Asian market, this is pretty much how you're going to find them. And then, of course, we'll get rid of the neck. First, we'll cut the skin here, both sides, so we can see the neck. And then we'll just put the knife in there. A good cleaver or a good pair of kitchen shears will work very well. And there we go. Cut the skin and the neck is away. The next step here is perhaps a bit unusual. Usually we cut a whole chicken through the back. Well, today we're going to cut it straight through the breastbone down the middle on this front side or breast side. So first here, holding the skin, let's cut the skin so as not to make a messy job of this. Then we'll break the breastbone here and simply continue to cut. There we are. We're right through. Again, you can use butcher's shears or simply explain to your butcher that this is how you want the chicken done. Trimmed and then cut open through the breastbone. Now, back here there's the hip bone. We want this chicken to lay flat, so I'm going to take the cleaver and go like that on both sides. There we are. Now it'll lay perfectly flat. Why all this preparation? Well, we're going to roast chicken in a wok. It's quite an amazing dish. Let's heat up the wok. We'll get it nice and hot. Wipe my hands clean. We're going to add some oil to the wok. There we go. You need about six tablespoons, and the oil won't stay in the dish, but you need to have enough to be able to cook this chicken properly. Now. Move the oil around in the pan. Contact with the sides of the pan makes the oil hotter faster. Put my spatula here for the moment. And now we're going to take the chicken. We're going to lay it down carefully, skin side first. And when you put something into a pan of hot oil, always put it down away from yourself not towards yourself. Here we go. And there we are. Right off the bat, I can see my oil is quite hot. My pan is more than hot enough. So we adjust the heat. 
We'll tilt the pan so that the oil comes in contact with all of the chicken. In a dish like this, don't rush to move the chicken too quickly. Let it brown up, let it sear, and then it will come free of the pan naturally of its own accord. If you want to, shake the pan gently to free the chicken. You can see right now that it's already lovely and free of the pan. What we have to do here to get a lovely roasted look is turn the chicken while it's cooking. This doesn't mean to turn the chicken right over. What it means is to take the chicken, and I'll do it this way here. Whoop, watch out, be careful with the oil here. Perhaps a pair of tongs is a better choice for this job. Turn the chicken on its side, like this. And we'll let it brown on its side. And then in a moment, when it browns on this side, we'll flip it over to the other side. And that's the first step in this recipe. You can always baste the chicken with some oil as well as it's cooking. Time to flip it onto its other side. Most important thing when working with oil and deep frying is don't rush, don't panic, just go carefully. Adjust the heat a little bit. What's important is the skin is getting seared and closing up and developing a lovely color. So in the next step, it won't stick to the pan. We'll open up the chicken here once again so that we can be sure that the front gets a nice even coloring. But this whole thing doesn't take very long at all. A good 10 minutes should be sufficient. And right now I'm going to turn off the heat and then very carefully I'm going to lift the chicken out of the pan and I'm going to place it onto a side dish to wait for the next step. That looks lovely. I'll bring my dish a little bit closer. Our chicken is gonna wait here for just a brief moment. We've still got a bit of moisture in the oil. I'm gonna get rid of that oil right away. There we go. We'll do a quick wipe up around the wok. Always cleaning up after every step in your cooking process. And we'll put the heat back on. Don't need a strong heat this time. What we're going to do is make a sauce to finish cooking the chicken in. I'm going to take some plain ordinary vinegar, rice vinegar will do. And you might want to look around your local Asian store to see what kinds of vinegar are available. Each kind of vinegar will make a different taste to the chicken. Some plain soy sauce. And I'd like to recommend a Chinese style soy sauce over a Japanese style soy sauce. The Japanese soy sauce is great, don't get me wrong. But we're looking for a Chinese taste here. That's what's important. We'll add some sugar. And now we'll add some bourbon. About two ounces of bourbon will be fine. If you're not looking to make a flambe dish. But you want to have a nice bourbon aroma to this. If you don't like bourbon, use a little bit of whiskey. Or if you want to, go fully classical and ignore our Western touch to the dish and use some Chinese rice wine. Let's bring this to the boil. See how by moving around the liquid in the pan, it will come to the boil that much sooner? We're ready now for the next step, which is to return the chicken to the pan skin side down. Here we go. See, the chicken is still raw. We need to complete the cooking process. And this needs a lower heat. I'm gonna turn my wok burner down to minimum. And we're gonna allow this to simmer in this sauce 
turning it exactly the same way we turn the chicken in the frying process. So that is the front, then the side, then the other side, and we'll let that go for another 10 or 15 minutes. If you want to accelerate the process, you can even put a lid on the pan, and I think that's what I'll do right now. Day 27. If being surprised is one of the rules of travel, then Hong Kong must truly be one of the most traveled places on earth. Take the Napa restaurant high above Kowloon, for instance. What a discovery. California-style fusion cuisine served in elegant Art Deco surroundings. Everything from the chairs and wall treatments to plates and tablecloths are reminiscent of a bygone era. Even the original paintings evoke the style. This restaurant is one of the more fascinating examples of what can happen when East meets West. In this case, they collided. The result, a dining experience for all the senses. Okay, now the chicken is just about done. What I did a moment ago was I took a toothpick and I just poked into the thickest part of the thigh meat the juices ran clear, telling me that the chicken is cooked. That's good news. Because next, we're gonna take the chicken and we're gonna open it up the other way. Up till now, everything has gone on skin side down. Well, now we're putting skin side up and we're gonna give this chicken an oven roasted appearance. Tricky. Well, not really. We have a wonderful glaze building right before our eyes in the pan. There we are. I've got the chicken tilted for glazing. I'm going to increase the heat in the pan, move the chicken up a bit, and also, of course, let's work sensibly. Let's tilt our wok a bit. Oh, chicken won't stay still. There we go. So I can get at this glaze. Now, this will quickly reduce, so be careful. What you want to see happen here is the chicken will begin to darken up as the glaze reduces. So don't be afraid at this point of working with a reasonably high heat. Believe it or not, this dish will work well in a well-seasoned cast iron frying pan. You don't need to have a wok, but it's so fun to cook a whole chicken in a wok. It's, it's not really like a big challenge, but it sure is impressive when you tell your friends at the table that you roasted it in a wok. And with that bourbon aroma, there'll be no question at the table about whether or not this is an East meets West kind of dish. Almost perfect here. We're getting that color. I'm just going to increase the heat another notch. There we go. Oh yeah, see, oh, it's becoming very thick. You can tell how it's bubbling in the bottom of the pan as well as how it's coating the chicken with each pass of the glaze. Oh, yummy. It gets a little bit harder to scoop up the glaze and you want to smell for that first sign of the scorching sugar. And there we are. That's about as far as we're going to take it. I'll turn the heat off the pan now and transfer our oven roasted chicken cooked in a wok with bourbon. So let's just simplify the name bourbon chicken. Carefully place it on the platter. Another splash of the glaze, ever so slight. We'll clean up the plate like a real chef would. And there you have it. Bourbon chicken. It's a wonderful dish, something you should try at home.
Fusion cuisine doesn't belong only to five-star chefs. It's for those of us who want to have adventures in our kitchens. More adventures to come on Entree to Asia. I'm Thomas Robson. To find out more about Entree to Asia, including recipes and program descriptions, visit our website at www.entretoasia.com.